Hi friends. Well, do you know since time immemorial mankind has led an expedition of geniuses to reach the peak of truth? Well, one such expedition began in the 1900s. It was to understand the structure of matter. Well, matter is composed of indivisible building blocks. This idea was recorded as early as the 5th century BCE by Leucippus and Democritus. The Greeks called these particles as atomos, meaning indivisible, and the modern word atom is derived from this term. Democritus proposed that the different types and combinations of these particles were responsible for the various forms of matter. However, these ideas were largely ignored in those times. As most of the philosophers favored Aristotelian perspective. Aristotle believed that instead of matter being made by tiny particles like atoms, it was fundamentally air, fire, water, and earth. The concept of energy and matter had been blurry during those times. John Dalton made the first attempt to bring some clarity on the structure of atom. He proposed that matter is made up of the smallest indivisible particle called atom. This can be envisioned by considering a paper. Now divide this paper into two halves. Now go a step further and divide it into further two halves. Now keep on repeating this process until you get the last and smallest indivisible unit which will be called as atom. Dalton's ideology carried on till J.J. Thomson gave a theory on structure of atom. Thomson was awarded the Nobel Prize for discovery of electrons. Thomson proposed the atom to be like a plum pudding. He stated the positive part to be the pudding, whereas the negative part to be the plums embedded in the pudding. This can also be understood by looking at this example of watermelon. First. Cut it into two halves. The red part in the fruit is the positive part, whereas the seeds here are the negatives. After Thomson's plum pudding model came an experiment which was done by Rutherford students Ernst Martson and Hans Giger. The experiment is called Alpha Particle Scattering Experiment. The experiment began by using foils. Foils of various materials were being used in this experiment. During one such experiment, they bombarded alpha particles on gold foil. But what is alpha particle? That's the question. Alpha particles are basically helium nuclei. A helium atom consists of two protons and two neutrons with two electrons revolving around it. If somehow you would remove two electrons from the atom, then what would be left will be two protons and two neutrons. So, when the alpha particles were bombarded on a gold foil, 99% of the particles passed through the foil. Of the remaining 1%, 0.9% got deflected by a very small angle while the remaining 0.1% reflected back. These observations had blown away the most curious minds of that time. Because according to Thomson's model, all the particles would either pass through the foil or be reflected back. Based on his observations, Rutherford gave an explanation. He said that 99% of particles passed through the foil gave an indication that atom had plenty of empty space. He proposed that there contained something in the atom that caused deflection of 1% of particles. This deflection occurred as the alpha particle being positively charged was getting repelled by something having similar charge to that of alpha particles. He termed this core as nucleus. Nucleus contained all the positive charge of the atom. Nucleus was situated in the center of the atom. Now let us imagine the nucleus as a cricket ball. 
then the entire stadium would be of the size of the atom. Further calculations revealed the size of the nucleus to be 10 raised to minus 15 meters and the size of the atom to be 10 raised to minus 10 meters. Here, atom size was 10 power 5 times greater than that of nucleus size. But still a question remained. Since the atom being electrically neutral, Rutherford said that nucleus held all the positive charge, right? But what about the negative charge? Well, J.J. Thomson a few years ago had discovered these negatively charged particles and coined them as electrons. Rutherford solved this conundrum by explaining that electrons revolved around the nucleus. During that time, the Copernicus theory that planets revolved around the sun had been accepted. So, Rutherford said that the revolution of electrons was similar to our solar system. As Rutherford answered this problem, another problem had cropped up. That was, if the electron revolved around the nucleus, what was the root of centripetal force? Well, Rutherford even solved this problem by explaining that the centripetal force derived from the electrostatic force of attraction between the positive and negatively charged particles. This was because unlike charges attract each other. However, Rutherford's theory failed to stand to the test of time. This was due to a theory of another scientist called James Maxwell. Maxwell gave a theory that accelerating charge radiates energy. Let us look at it how. Let us consider an atom. It has a nuclei at the center and electrons are revolving around it. If the velocity of electron is taken to be constant, then at every point it is changing its direction. For example, the electron at this point or at this point, its direction is like this. But we know that if direction changes, then its velocity also changes. That means that it is accelerating, which means that the electron will lose energy due to acceleration and the electron would crash into nucleus. Now, some scientists even calculated this crashing time to be 10 raised to minus 8 seconds. This was very astonishing as our theory said that electrons would never crash into nucleus. So, Rutherford's model failed to live up to its expectations. This was eventually corrected by one of Rutherford's favorite student, Neil Bohr. For more such fantastic videos, follow Top Scholars.